Welcome to the Hard Water Fishing Show. Jeff and Jason talk tactics, gear, and ice fishing legends. Welcome back to the Hard Water Fishing Show. It is season four, episode 10. It is the third week of January, 2021. Today, we're going to talk about kind of two topics. Um, we'll talk a little bit about fishing with uh, family, and we'll talk some about tip-ups. Um, this week, we have a guest, our guest, we're really excited to have her on, Kathy Olson. So we will hear all about ice fishing from her. So that'll be really exciting. It, it's great to finally have another perspective on ice fishing that we haven't heard from before. Um, we've had a lot of, uh, of, of our views and male views, and so we actually will have the female's view of ice fishing, and um, we're pretty excited to share that with our listeners tonight. So it's going to be a great show. But before we get yes. too far down the rabbit hole, Jeff, I'm a little thirsty. I am also thirsty. So I am drinking Summit cabin crusher it's a kolsch yeah kolsch style ale with lime so it's not really summer but you know whatever i don't know about this beer jay it has no story that's unusual for brewed you to, brewed to crush your thirst perfect for cabin country it says proudly brewed in saint paul minnesota so here we go not bad not bad Hmm. Yeah, not bad. Light with a little lime. With a little lime, you say? Yeah, it's lime. It's got lime in it. Cabin Crusher. I think it's more made for a summer cabin. Okay, but, but it's the the we're in the depths of January, so that makes sense. Trying to bring back a little bit of the summertime. Although winter is my yes. favorite time of year, I'd have to say. But you do you, man. Yeah. All right. What do you got today? Well, Jay? I. Uh, you know. I'm sticking with the home brew this evening. This is once again a okay. cream ale in a brown nondescript bottle, which uh, I should take a picture. So I'm drinking a, a nice cream ale brewed by an old man from a small town in Iowa. And uh, he, do, he does a really nice job. So I'm doubling up on this from the last show. So Sounds like you're popping champagne there, Jay. It is not. It is not champagne, nor the champagne of beers. A little pour action there. You always got to pour these into a frosted glass. Hmm. Actually, that's not the cream ale. Hmm. That is. What is that? That's what happens when you don't put a label on <laughs> I mean, it. Jay. It's just a surprise. It's like. It's like beer. It is, you should have like it beer is on beer. the side. It is not a cream ale. Um, you're going to have to do some research and get back to us on that one because tonight you're drinking an unknown beer. beer. It's unknown. Does it still taste it good? It is though? wonderful. It is, it is not carpet. It is not carpet. No, nope, he right. did. A, he's doing a good job. He He's honed in on my palate. Not an ale, not a... Not a uh, India pale it ale. It is not an India so. pale ale. So I will, uh, I will, I've reached out. I will hopefully have an answer of what I'm consuming by the end of the show, but it's good and <laughs> quenching my thirst, whatever. So moving on to show business, Jason, while you enjoy that beer, patron, not patron, uh, we have a couple new supporters again this week, Jay. That's awesome. I know we are up to eight people, so I can't say enough how much we enjoy, you know, Appreciate the listening and the support. Um, it helps us pay for, you know, the hosting costs and that kind of stuff. So we have uh, Liam from Amory, Wisconsin, and he sent us some nice pics along with being a supporter of the show. A patron. Fish pictures, I hope. And yes, they are fish pictures. Thank God. Yes, <laughs> they're nice ones. <laughs> and he said he learned a lot from listening to the show. So I mean, a couple wise there that you know, that's awesome learned from us. Also, Ian. You know Ian. Yeah. Ian's been a fan forever and ever. So he now is a patron also. So thank you, Ian, for... Well, thanks, Ian. That's really nice of you. Joining the club. And uh, I will say our shipping department has been a little backed up lately. So I've talked to the head shipper 
in their shipping department. We will get the stickers out to those of you who have been patrons but have not got your stickers yet because I'm a little bit behind. So, oh, did I say I? I meant the shipping department. Yeah. Shipping department's behind. It, it is. <laughs> it is. Um. <laughs> I actually found a few older stickers that we had laying around, so maybe I'll throw in a bonus ones as an apology for being a little late. So thank you to the patrons for listening, or for the support. Uh, we still have our gear on Redbubble, so you can find there um, on our website. There's a merch button. You can go there. However, we don't have an update yet, but we are working on some some improvements or changes in the gear area, in the, the swag area. We are so nothing to share yet, but it's coming. Oh, that was uh, that was in the promotions department. Yes, promotions department. Yeah, <laughs> are you in charge of the pro- promotions department, Jason? I think we laid that guy off. Oh, that poor guy. <laughs> I know. I know. Hey, what I was gonna say before when I interrupted you is, um, I noticed, and, and this may or may not be because of the show, we had Kurt on a couple shows ago. Was that last show? No, it was two, two shows, shows ago. ago we Kurt had, came on yeah. with us. Right. At the time we talked to Kurt, he hadn't he had not caught like large fish yet this year. And did you um, notice shortly after our show aired, Kurt on his Facebook man, he is catching the fish. In fact, he had one day he had two fish. He had one in each hand, he'd caught a double. And I think Oh my gosh. I wonder if that is a direct result of him being on our show and kind of talking about his craft and then he just just kind of dug back in and got it done. Yeah, I, I'm I'm convinced that it was direct result of him being on our show that that he was able to just really turn it on. And it's more like osmosis, right? It's not like we gave him the information. No, no, it's no, just no. Being on the show, no, we maybe we asked the right questions. We spurred some thought maybe through our inquisitive lines of questioning, and Kurt <laughs> turned it on. We'll see, Kurt. Let us know what you think. Uh, feel free to to send us a message and and we'll either confirm or issue a retraction maybe down the road. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. I love it. I love it. All right. So you can find us. Ooh, there's some updates here too. Instagram, of course, we post pictures out there. Um, Some of them are things that we get shared from our listeners and some are things that we take. We have Instagram and Facebook too. So we put stuff out there, same place, videos and, uh, we also have something new, Jason. We do. That you, media relations in charge of, had set up on TikTok. We do have a hard water fishing show TikTok account. We have not yet produced any content. We shall see. But maybe there's something coming up. And I don't know how also, to make TikTok, so we'll have to uh, we'll, we'll work hire on that. a TikTok we'll manager that, specifically for that. I've created one TikTok in my life. No kidding. Yeah, my kids create them all the time. But well, maybe I, we I, could put I, them in charge of our TikTok account. Maybe, maybe it'll happen soon. So, it does have one follower, a TikTok account. It would be me. <laughs> what we need to do, <laughs> you don't even We need to take it. clips of you from the show, right? Right. And then we could do the the blind reaction thing they do with Aaron. I thought you were going to talk about a picture of a coffee table, with a pop can on <laughs> yeah, it, that, and then the man to just, and then like. In a second, it's just gone, and it's the magic we table. We could do right? that too. We could do that, or the magic dryer. Like, yeah, it's full of clothes, yeah. and then you you break away and come back, and there's just no clothes yeah. in it. Yeah, something like that. But we'll see. Anyway, we should move on. So you can also find uh, all of our episodes and a bunch of other information on hardwatershow.com. Check that out, and we also have a YouTube channel, which we do post a few videos on. And every episode, we also put a video on, so you can listen to it on YouTube if you want. Uh, Jason wouldn't know because he's been there maybe once accidentally, but generally doesn't go there. No, I don't. You can email us at hardwatershow at gmail.com, and we read everything, and we get lots of pictures. We love when people share stuff with us, and we'll put it up on Facebook and Instagram. And maybe, I don't know, I guess you don't put that kind of stuff on TikTok, but we'll get that up there. And as always, we do read everything, even if it doesn't make the show. And we really do appreciate when you send us stuff in. It's it's pretty cool. So thank you. It is very cool. Very cool. All right. Um, and I think, you know, one other thing I didn't put on here, Jay, I think we, we were over 80K downloads now, I think. Wow. We're in that range. So, That's so we've had cool. a good year. So yeah. thank you for listening. So let's move on to news and current events. 
So this is a trend I noticed out on social media. Um, and I hadn't heard this term before this year, but CPR. Have you heard CPR? Not the not the kind where you're helping yeah, somebody. Yeah, I've, I've heard, I've heard that. I've seen that floating around. They'll say fish CPR'd and... So what does CPR stand for for fish, Jeff? It's it's catch photo release. Yes. So I didn't know that. Like, and I read outdoor news, and it's been in there for years and years. But somebody said, "Oh, you CPR," and I'm like, "What do you mean? It's a fish. I just put it back in the lake." They're like, "Well, you took a picture and put it back in the lake." So, so I, admit it. You tried I, to give a fish mouth to mouth, didn't you? <laughs> I wasn't sure where to push and like my put my mouth. I mean, they have teeth. And I don't know. It was kind of a mess. It's more of a bass thing probably than a northern thing. Yeah. Ooh. How about a musky? No. Ooh, take some par- some teeth out. Lips. Ouch. All right. Ouch. So I, I did kind of. It was interesting. I noticed that like people were holding a beer next to their their fish or a Pringles can or something. Mm-hmm. You know, and I've seen people do this with like uh, knives and other things to kind of get perspective on how big it is, but. It was kind of nice because sometimes, you know, we all have done this. Like you hold the fish way out and, you know, it looks like you got a 30-pound perch, <laughs> right? So so I think the perspective was nice and I thought it was interesting. Yeah, um, I think it it's nice to have the perspective, you know, so that yeah. you, you, you can tell what you're looking at. And it saves some of the bickering, too, on social media about how big or small the fish is. But I do wonder, why do you buy all those small Pringle cans? <laughs> the short ones, you know, they have the tall Pringle cans, and they have the short ones, like the snack size. Yep. You're like, look how big my fish is, and you get the snack size. <laughs> you know, for pop cans too, they have the ten ounce pop cans yep. and the twelve ounce yep. pop cans. You yep. know, like the little ones. <laughs> so there's ways to get around it, Jay. And we got some really nice pictures again from Nevada Dave with some trout. I, but Nevada Dave, but he said he was fishing in Idaho. So, huh? But those trout are really really pretty fish i mean i mean i like a, a walleye can be a pretty fish but i think they are not as pretty as trout jordan t he sent us a video and some pictures of i don't know how big this walleye was but it was monster i'm gonna try to get that one up on on facebook and instagram here pretty quick i think that'll be the next one i post unless he had a four inch hole that he released that fish back through you couldn't have put that fish, fish through a four inch hole with a boot yeah, I, it was huge. <laughs> I, I think that was an eight-inch hole, and yeah, I think that, that it, was a it that was a solid fit. walleye. And then we got some unique, probably uh, fish pictures that I haven't seen before from Rick. Um, he is carp ice fishing, or ice fishing for carp, and they were pretty big. Was he doing that intentionally? Big. I guess I didn't read all the way through that. He just had pictures. It, I, it didn't have a story to go okay, along with it, okay. but it seemed it was intentional. But they were pretty big. He said they fight hard. Carp fishing's like a European thing. Hmm. Yeah, it, it not as much in the states. Usually, you know, if you catch carp, you get irritated. But I can't imagine that that carp probably really—it's a big carp—probably really fought through the ice. Oh, I would think so. I mean, it looked like a, it was a big fish. I didn't have a Pringles can or a ten ounce. It pop did not can need one. It, it had lips bigger than your head. <laughs> it was big. It was big. <laughs> So, yeah, that's what we have for current news, current events this week. Um, I don't know, Jay, anything else you wanted to mention in that section? Well, I, I think I would say the ice road's open, right, to north north of the angle. Did we mention that yet? Oh, the ice road's open. Yeah. And so I some think... foreshadowing. I think, um, yeah, some people we know might have wandered up that way. I am struggling... I, and though I so want to do it, I'm not sure if I'm going to get to do it. So I might have to live like always vicariously through other people. I will too. They, I got, I got a phone call last week, and you know it was something about we're going ice road trucking. Yeah, I got the text, but I didn't get any context, which is typical of Northwoods. Dave uh, communicates yes. very cagely through text message. You don't always know what he's <laughs> saying. So 37 miles on an ice road. That's what it takes to get from, I think, Baudette. It goes out of Baudette, right? And it goes... Well, and you, I think probably the speed limit's, what, 10? Right? You're probably he not... He said 25. 25. That's not 25. bad. But he said it takes an hour. Okay. A little over an hour. So, it, yeah, an hour. And, um, I mean, you drive across, you, you know, because you, you can't go to Canada. You want? Right? You think you we could take the Prius up there like we did ice fishing in Duluth that time? I don't know. I mean, 
It's got snow tires. Seventy-five on. miles. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. If it's in the, like in the, like other axis they've been on, they they can get kind of bumpy. The entry is a little. We'd bumpy have to bring sometimes. some planks. <laughs> Don't you just pick it up? Can't you just pick it up you, and move it? They're they're not light. Oh okay. no, they're not right. light. The batteries are not light. I can just see this someday. You know, there's a uh, the hard water fishing show gets really big. Um, we get you know we have our own vehicles with stickers and stuff like on the sides mm-hmm. of sponsors and everything, right? And most people would have like a half ton pickup, right? No. But Jason would have the Prius. We'd have the Prius. No. <laughs> yeah. Usually I drive the Burb, but yeah. Which is like anti Prius, right? Like we ba- it balances. We're basically we balance out to like a Equinox or something. <laughs> An Equinox. <laughs> All right. So, uh, fishing report, Jay. Did, did, you didn't have, did you have a fishing report this week? No. Hmm. No, I'm I'm pathetic. I'm pretty pathetic. We'll we'll, we'll keep on working on that, but I do have a short fishing report. Um, so this weekend I was up. Kind of my normal walleye spot, and um, I had some helpers this weekend. We had uh, two little ones and my brother-in-law with us, and we caught. Oh, it wasn't too bad. We caught in a day. We caught four walleyes, but they were nice ones. Mm-hmm. They, they were um, sm- solid. So smallest one was a nineteen. The biggest one was a twenty-six. Twenty-six. It's amazing to me. We caught a twenty-four, and it was a big fish. But how much bigger a 26 is than a 24? Like, they get so much bigger when they, they grow those inch, those end inches. So. Yeah, they do. They really do. I mean, they just like, you're like, oh, a 24, it's a nice, nice fish. And then the 26, and you're like, is this twice the size of the 24? It just seems so much bigger. But uh, Yeah, then you lay them next yeah. to like a 17, and you're like, holy crap. I know, exactly. But, but we did catch and release all of them because they weren't in the slot anyways, but... You know, typically I don't keep that size of fish, but they are fun to catch. And so we caught those and really strategy. We were in 20 feet of water. Um, They do not like the lures. So it's hooks with uh, fathead minnows. And whole minnow? And where where would you hook the minnow, Jeff? Uh, Whole minnow. I was hooking them in the back trying to angle the hook towards the front of the minnow. They were really finicky. Like, I had missed three or four of them. Like, normally I don't always fish the bobbers, but I was fishing with a bobber, and you let that bobber, you know, it's not like when they hit it, it's not like some vicious thing that, like, wham, that bobber goes flying down the hole. It's like a it's like a gumming, you know? They, like, yep. come and grab it, and slowly goes down, and then you have to, like, in your brain go... So how far do I let this bobber go down? You don't want to let it go too far, and they let go. But if you don't let it go far enough, then you're going to lose them, right? Yeah. So, so I lost a few. We caught some. Um, we caught one on a rattle reel, the big one we caught in the middle of the night in a rattle reel. Um, you know, we were fishing, foot off the bottom. You know, I mean, it, it's it's what I call typical Mille Lacs fishing. You're not going to catch 100 of them, but the ones you catch are nice, mm-hmm. right? Some days you'll catch a hundred of them. Well, maybe not a hundred, but you'll catch a bunch of them. But this time of year, I feel like it's it's about time sitting out there. <laughs> yeah, sure, you put enough time. hours, you're going to catch four fish. And maybe somebody else has better luck than I do, but that seems to be when you have a, th- a three and a four year old with you, you're not exactly mobile. You you are where you're at. You're going to watch some cartoons and you're going to catch some fish. Um, the other things I learned: remember to sharpen your hook. I think that's always good. I know everybody makes fun of me for that, but I like a sharp hook. And man, the, the snow is like concrete up there. Like, so it snowed uh-huh. and then it blew. And literally, like, I mean, I could drive my car over these snow drifts. Wow. They were so hard. Like, I brought a plastic shovel and broke it, like a snow shovel. Uh-huh. And I had to have my brother in law bring literally a garden shovel. Because that's all that was going to break up the snow. Like a spade. Like it, yeah. Yes, like a spade. Yeah, you needed that. So so that's the fishing report from uh, Mille Lacs. You know, I'm out of the red door. And uh, that's usually where I go. So it's pretty good. Well, that's um, cool. I'm glad you're able to get yeah. into some fish. That's always nice with the kiddos. 
Yeah, it, it was hard because the first... I got up there late Friday because it was kind of a last-minute thing. And I don't know. It always seems like last minute when I go up there. And I didn't catch any fish till the next morning. Then they caught... The weather was wicked on Saturday. You know, you, you go out of the fish house and it's like... 30 mile an hour winds and snow blowing at you like it just pelting you you know and you go into the fish house and it's nice you know i um so. i do have a fishing report oh because i was thinking like what was i doing no because we didn't talk about the camping trip i went on and then we fished oh my gosh yeah because we didn't skip last week so yeah. we're two weeks of fishing so i did go i was like i know i've been fishing i did go wow. fishing but i didn't well, catch any fish oh no um so we uh are you done with yours there's a story there's a story yeah so yeah let's 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 go with the story me and uh oli and oli's brother were getting ready for a boundary water trip coming up and uh, camping winter camping jeff um and so what we did was a test run at a state you mean like what i did last weekend in my ice shack winter camping not very different very, very different, <laughs> but same concept, I guess. Not sleeping yeah. in your house. Um, yes. So we uh, we did a test run at a state park, and um, what we did is we camped overnight in tents, about a half mile from the car, and there was a little pond down the hill from where we camped, and so we fished that pond, and we didn't know. There's no, you know, it's one of these smaller little things. There's no DNR information or whatever, so we had no idea what lived in this little glump of water. And like whether you're going to drill a hole and hit dirt yeah, or whether we had you're going no to drill a hole and get water. No idea. <laughs> and it actually turned out to be like 17, 18 feet deep in the middle. Oh. So it was definitely deep enough. And so we did some jigging, and um, um, uh, Oli's brother caught a northern on a tip-up, little snake. Oh. And interestingly, we didn't have real long to fish. We By the time we got down there, we probably fished for an hour and a half, two hours at the oh. most. But, see, we're testing all of our equipment. So we had a hand auger. Oh. Yeah. So that was I haven't used a hand auger in 20 years. So that was different. <laughs> and you were 20 years younger. I was. You were 20 years younger. Yeah. Not going to. So funny story. Next morning, Oli wakes up and goes, God, my shoulder hurts. Or maybe it was his brother. One of the two. I don't know. I know yeah. it was his brother. He's like, I don't know what I did to my shoulder. I'm like, you were drilling holes with an ice auger. That's what's going on. <laughs> Oh, yeah, maybe. But, you know, because you don't do that every day, um, any, no. especially anymore. But um, so there was a one hole I found um, had a whole bunch of marks going on. And they would come up and look at it and then dart away. I really think it was perch. I didn't have a camera with, but based on kind of how they were acting, you could, you're pretty active. You could see them come right up to the lure and then you could see them dart away, kind of acting like those yep. little fish do sometimes. Um, but we didn't have, um, we didn't have any live bait with us, so I just had some plastics. Didn't have waxies or spikes or nothing. We had some frozen, frozen minnows. So I tried. Um, I did try some fro a frozen minnow head and couldn't get anybody to to talk to me with that. And then I even tried just cutting a little piece of belly meat off one of the minnows and sticking it on a hook. And and didn't belly make, meat. Yep, didn't get any takers on that either. But do you think like the tenderloin of like, uh, is better than the belly meat? Is, the, maybe I should have gotten tenderloin instead of bacon. I don't know, but. <laughs> but that's what I did. So, um, minnow bellies. Is there a market for minnow, minnow bellies? bellies? Well, you know, there's a lot of bodies laying around after people pinch the heads off. So there's probably a market for the bodies, I guess. But um, no. It, so, so Jason, you got me intrigued about the the hand auger. Cause yeah, that is not a piece of gear we have talked about. No, a lot. it um, wasn't. Talk to me about what what your this what was the choice was in hand, ancient, hand auger. Like one of the first augers Oli had, I think it was a seven inch um, Strike Master. Was it Strike Master? No. Mora? Is it Mora? The blue bottom? Yeah, it was blue. Handle? No, yeah, was so it the, blue? I think it's a Mora. Maybe it's a Mora. I don't know. It was a hand auger, um, seven inch. And Sean did a, Oli did a really nice job of, of, of sharpening that bad boy up. It, it worked really well. We had almost a foot of ice and and you could whip through it and a couple you know in a minute or less and and it cut really well um oh. how thick was the ice i would say just under a foot okay so good a good amount yeah and I it mean, had it like... had a frozen layer of slush so you do the slush cut mm -hmm. through and then do the ice cut through kind of a deal 
so kind of a mm-hmm. double bump on it. Um, so it's like it's like elusive. Like you go through the first little easy yeah. stuff, and you're like oh, this is so easy, and you hit the ice, and you're like, Whoa. yeah, yeah. It had that nice catch at the bottom. It just was weird trying to get the mechanics of it up again, right? Because it, there mm-hmm. is kind of a muscle training to that at some yep. level to get efficient with it. So my plan really is just to let Sean drill all the holes on our main trip. But it got down to like 12 degrees, 14 degrees. We were sleeping in tents, no heaters, just sleeping bag and tent. And and it worked, man. We were comfortable and, and it was it was a cool. good time. It Really, it shows you, you know, you don't need all that fancy stuff to, to survive, right? I mean, need, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you're right. It is a different level, though. Yes. So yeah, we're sure. we are awesome. planning a trip and hoping to get some fish up in the B dub. So it'll be a, it'll be a good time. Cool. So so from an auger perspective, it's only hand augers. Yeah. Where you're, you're camping. Yeah, you can't when you're when you're boundary waters. You can't use any electric, no drills, nothing. So it's got to be hand auger. Gotcha. Yeah. I knew the gas part, but I wasn't sure about the hand auger. It's pretty consistent that 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 constitutes um, something that's non-human powered at that point. Gotcha. So, that's and I get it. it, it it's a slippery slope, but you know, if they allow a, a hand auger, then then you could, you know, why not an electrically Be- propulsed kayak or something? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, it makes sense. All right. Cool. Um, so that's an awesome story, and for I don't have a fishing report. That's quite a fishing report. So I know. I saw. I was sitting here thinking. I know I did something. What was it? <laughs> I drove like seven hours north or I something. I did, yeah, yeah like, I drove. <laughs> I, I slept in a tent and I fished. So I did do all the things. Yeah, I did all the things. All right. <laughs> so let's move on to gear. We've talked a little bit about gear, but one thing. So last weekend when I was up ice fishing, um, one of the first years I've left my shack out in the ice for a long period of time before I used to pull it off and on because I was a little weary of it, but I've gotten used to it now. So there's lots of shacks out there. And so I left it out there, but um, because the ice is not super thick this year, it's about 15 inches last weekend or something. So it's plenty good for cars and holding stuff up. But um, I had heard rumors, and my neighbor told me, my ice fishing neighbor down the road, (laughs) he told me that um, he had like some inches of water under his shack. You know, because it snowed a fair amount up there. So what happens is when it snows the weight of the snow we've seen this many times you drill a hole and the water will come up right from Mm -hmm. the weight of the snow and also the ice shack that gets it down there so usually i drop my wheelhouse on the ice right and so it kind of seals up and it's not a big deal to drill holes well i decided that i was going to put blocks under mine this time because i certainly didn't want to be sitting in a couple inches of water and i certainly didn't want it to freeze in a couple inches of water that'd be a lot of work and then try to get it out you know, you have some mechanical advantage to cranks and stuff, but, you know. So the problem with that is now your your shack is four inches off the ice. So And it was whipping. The wind was whipping. So you open your hole, drill your hole, and the wind just whoosh, right up the hole. And, you know, you can turn the heater on a lot, but it still gets pretty cold in there. You're talking to a guy that slept in a tent the same weekend. I know. Well, you know, I mean, you just turn the heat up. But so I, I bought, I did some Poor research guy. on hole covers. I know it was rough. You're sleeping in a tent, and I'm, you know, my toes get cold in my Crocs. <laughs> I have to put socks and Crocs, not just Crocs. I bought these. I did some research. There's a couple different kinds of, of ice hole covers, right? You put them in the hole, and it kind of seals your, to the ground, so that wind doesn't come up, right? And so there's glow ones, which are kind of cool, right? They glow so you can have better visibility down there. And I have lights over each hole, so that isn't super important. But, you know, it can be nice. In the middle of the night, you wake up, you know, you can see the holes glowing, so you know where not to step and that kind of That's stuff. That's kind of important. Yeah, but um, they have black ones and white ones also. But So I was looking at these glow ones, and then I found these fabric ones from Hardcore Outdoors. And we don't have sponsors, right, Jay? This is just what we use. So I ordered them, and... I ordered them on Monday because I went fishing this weekend. I ordered them on Monday. They came this morning. I mean, wow. like, that's like Amazon fast. So now they are made in Mankato, and I'm not super far from Mankato, Minnesota. So 
So they showed up this morning, so we'll try them out this weekend. Well, that's cool. You have to let us know how they work. And so they're made in Mankato? They're made in Mankato. They are fabric. So basically what you do is like, the other ones I looked at were plastic, right? Mm-hmm. So they were like, you'd put them in and then you kind of figure out where your ice house sits and you kind of cut the, if you needed to cut the the plastic so it would like make a tube in oh, your Oh, well then how, right? if it's not the same distance off the ice every time, what do you do? Right. That's what I thought. So these fabric ones go from anywhere from four to like, I don't know, they adjust, right? You just roll them up. Well, basically. sure. Yeah. And they sit in the ice and they're insulated. So I'm... Hopefully they're good. I bought six of them, and they were $35 a piece, so it was not like a cheap investment, but I got tired of being cold. So we're going to try them out this weekend. Um, I have eight holes in my shack, but I don't often use eight holes, so I figured six was good. They store nice because they're fabric, so they just flatten out versus these big tubes you got to mm-hmm. figure out what to do with. And So, yeah, I'm excited to try them out this weekend. Well, that's cool. And a and local com- local-ish company, so that's also cool, too. Oh, I could buy it like on their website and check it out. Yeah, Again, I'm looking at it right now. No Boy, you could dump your checkbook on this place. Uh, but I really want, they have ones that go over your wheel wells, which is big because you mm-hmm. get a lot of air in your wheel wells. And there's no way to bank that up. There's a tire there and a crank and that kind of stuff. Um, and they have ones for the windows, which I really want because huh. I hate my curtains in my ice shack. They've got a 12-volt heated tip-up box. Yeah, they got cool stuff. Kind Generator of, covers, kind of a covers for your thing. propane tanks. I don't know. Again, I feel like I'm selling something, but I'm excited because yeah, I want to try cool. them out. They local look- company, localish, you know, Minnesota yeah. company. That's cool. Yeah, so check them out. So, did you see uh, Zach B? What he sent in? Did you see that picture? No, tell me about it. I missed it somehow. Okay, so we got an email from Zach B. He listened to our episode about contraptions. Okay, right? we haven't talked about contraptions for a long no, time. No, right? we need to get back to that. Yeah, I mean, it made my kind of like heart warm and, you know, it felt good to talk about contraptions and gizmos and use our lingo. It was awesome. I loved it. He, um, having a good contraption, didn't have a sled to go ice fishing, right? He wants to go ice fishing. You got to watch walk out. You need somewhere to put your auger in. You need something to put your shack in or all your stuff, your gear. He took a kiddie pool. I'm looking you know, at the this plastic picture kitty. now. Yeah, one of the little green kitty pool. Yep. Kind of put some ropes on it, and he said it worked great. So I thought that was awesome because the kitty pool is probably like 10 bucks or well, I don't know. And they're not using it in the winter. Yeah. So I mean, it seemed like... Multi-purpose. I thought this was like... It made me so happy to see contraptions and gizmos and so happy to see that. So I thought it was cool. I, I think mean, that, I was, that's... that's uh, Really innovative. I love it. Yeah, and, and think it spreads the weight out. It gets your stuff out there. It's lightweight. I mean, seemed perfect. You could throw your fish in there. It's just going to stay in the pool. So the other two gear things, um, these are just little tricks. Um, my ice shack takes two 30-pound propane tanks, and it's always hard to remember to fill them up, so I actually went and got another 30-pound propane tank so you can fill it up and bring it up there so you don't have to like worry about running out of propane because... You know, when it's cold outside, you don't want to run out of gas. So, I don't understand so. this heat thing. I Like I said, I slept outside for two nights with no heat. <laughs> yes, it's different. it's different. I just think you're overdoing it. Like you're making it more mm. complicated than it has to be. It's not complicated. I drive my car to my ice shack. <laughs> I get out. I turn on the generator. I watch football. I catch a fish. It's it's pretty uncomplicated. <laughs> it does sound a little less uncomplicated than than what I did. Set up a tent. Yeah. Sleep. Yeah. Try nope. to decide really how bad you have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, and then the other thing is, don't forget a shovel if you're going up, especially this year. That ice, there, that concrete snow. I went through a whole shovel. I hit the snowbank and it just shattered. So, needed a metal shovel this year. So, those are. I, kind of like I use them. I have a metal shovel. I keep in my ice shack. Yeah, those are nice. Yep. Not even the little like the little clam folding ones they've got. Oh. You know I, what I have is because it was, I don't know. That's what I could buy at the local store. Is it's yep. just a short. It's like a spade type shovel, not a spade, because I always think of a spade having the pointy end, right? But this, like a square nose a shovel, square nose shovel, but it's just like three feet long. So it's yep. it's what I call a deep hole shovel. So like if you're digging a hole, 
right? And you're all the way yep. down at the bottom. You don't you you want a little shovel so you can kind of dig into the sides and stuff. You don't need a big long handle on it because the handle gets in the way. Yeah, exactly. You're trying to dig the hole. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but then you can you know you can beat stuff with it or you know so it has multi purposes. Yeah, you you need a you need a heavy duty shovel out there this this on Mille Lacs this year because that snow is like concrete. All right, so I think uh, I think have we babbled long enough? Are we ready to get to the interview that everybody's been waiting for anyway? Yeah, I'm excited. They they've heard from us before. Yeah, we need yeah. to hear from uh, so we, a real expert. Yep, and and brings a very different perspective. And and I really we really enjoyed talking to her. So it was really nice of her to spend her time. So take a listen to Kathy. So today on the show we have Kathy, who fishes way more than most people I know. Probably and, way more than you, Jason. Ah, she does so much more. And she sends pictures of fish, holding fish, and I don't ever get a chance to do that. So we wanted to talk to Kathy today on a couple of topics. We wanted to learn everything we could from her about how she catches all these fish. And we also wanted to talk to her a little, about, little bit about just uh, being in the sport of, of ice fishing. As, as a female, they're not as plentiful in ice fishing, the ice fishing sport as men are. I mean, we're everywhere for crying out loud, but, but she is, is uh, one of the kind of rare few and actually a growing group of, of women that, that really enjoy ice fishing. How are you, Kathy? I'm done talking now. Your turn. I'm good. How are you guys? Thanks for having me. So uh, Kathy, uh, we kind of have a few questions here. First question, um, what advice do you have to other female anglers? Um, well, I think the the ice fishing world and and all the gear and everything has made it a lot easier for uh, females to get into the sport. I know when I started, um, I started as a young girl fishing with my dad up the cabin, and you know we would just mainly do summer fishing and really not ice fishing. As I got older and into high school, um, some of my friends were big into ice fishing and started getting me out into ice fishing. And I loved doing it, but it was just really hard to do it on my own and, and lug around a, you know, a big gas auger and drill multiple holes and try to find, you know, the best location to fish. And I think with, you know, all these companies and, and going to the electric auger and, you know, the women's, uh, the gear for women, um, the snowsuits, everything is gearing a little bit more towards getting females interested in the sport. Mm -hmm. And it makes it easier to actually get out there and ice fish. Um, you know, I have no problem going out and drilling multiple holes to find the location I want to fish now. And I just think you don't have to be scared of it anymore. And just to go out and, and give it a try. I mean, I love it. And, you know, I would sit on the ice, not catching any fish longer than my husband or, you know, I just love being out there. So I think don't be afraid of it. Don't be intimidated. Um, you know, these companies are gearing towards females now and trying to get more females interested in the sport. And it, it's great. So, Kathy, when you're out there in your your gear and uh, with your electric auger and stuff, what is your favorite fish to target? Like, what, what do you like to go after? primarily? I love to fish for walleye. I think it's, um, you know, you can go out and catch panfish on just about any lake, but I think um, there's just something about pulling in a walleye, the the challenge of catching them, you know, you know, they don't exactly just take the bobber down. Some, it's more of a finesse fish to catch. Mm -hmm. And I really just enjoy that challenge of catching them. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that think you got to be flashy and use a lot of different gear. And I really kind of stick to the basics. Um, but walleye is by far my favorite thing to catch. Um, you know, anytime I can get into some walleye, it's there's there's nothing better to catch. They put up a good fight and I just it's rewarding when you can pull one through the ice. What, what's a big walleye to you? What what gets you really jazzed? Well, my dream is to catch a 30. Um, my husband knows that if he was to catch a 30 inch walleye and I was not with him, he does not get to bring that home. It, the 30 inch walleye. <laughs> well, I think is, you're safe. Um, 
Yes, he has his boys fishing weekends. And every time he goes on those weekends, I said, you know, if you catch that 30, I don't want to hear about it. That is my fish that will go on the wall, not his. So um, my dream is to catch a 30. I've come close. My biggest is a 38 and three quarter inch walleye. Um, but to me, anything over 20 is, it's a great walleye. It's a lot of fun. It's a great fish. You know, even just even catching 16, 17 inch walleyes is a lot of fun. And, you know, 14 to 16 inch walleyes are great eaters, you know, so I'm not in it for catching the walleye to eat. I'm in it for the sport of it. I really don't even like fish that much, honestly. Um, but I just love, love catching them. So to me, a big, decent walleye, 24, 25, those mm-hmm. are real fun ones to catch. Um, once they start getting that big belly on them, they're awesome. Yeah. I want to get a nice solid bend in the rod when you set the hook and it's like, Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Definitely. Jeff, you've never, has that happened to you, Jeff? Uh, it has, it okay. has probably okay. more recently than you actually, to be I honest know. at this point, <laughs> I'm flipping crap and I'm just struggling <laughs> on the struggle bus. This so year. I'm hoping you get a little more, you know, have some experience this weekend, but, but yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we did okay last weekend. So. So what's your favorite presentation for walleye? What do you use the most? You know, I I tend to stick to the basics. A lot of people, you know, are trying all the new lures on the market and that's great. And sometimes that works for people, but I'm really a a bobber with a a plain hook and a kind of a drop shot off the bottom of that. And that has been my success go-to this year for sure. I've been out probably um, seven weekends now this, this winter wow. this has been the most that I've gotten out. Um, the kids are older now and we have a little bit more time to get out. So w- any chance we can, we, we, we get out there and I have had the most success with just a dead stick and a bobber, um, with a, a plain hook. I like fire red or pink. And then, uh, just a drop shot off the bottom of that, um, has been the best. Otherwise, you know, I'll use a Northland buckshot, um, my favorite go-to colors for that are probably the green and orange or um, a golden red version. I've also got a pink and white one that I like a lot as well. Um, I do like the, the Northland glow shot spoons, the new ones mm-hmm. where you can put the low glow sticks in them. Um, if I want to jig that I'll do that and then I'll have a dead stick in my other hole and then um, forage minnow old reliable. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys have done um kind of done something unique this year when, when you're out fishing, you have stayed, how many of those weekends have you camped on the ice? One, two, uh, five, five. So five weekends you've, you've spent the whole weekend in your insulated ice shack. Not, not a trailer like fancy pants, Jeff, but, hey, come on. but like, uh, <laughs> something that folds up and goes on a sled and you've slept on it on the ice five weekends. Correct. Yes. We, um, we had a, a, pop-up shelter before and the flip over. We actually have five fish houses, portable fish houses at our house now. Um, And this year we bought a new one. Um, We went with a thermal one. We went with the Otter, the the Monster Lodge. We wanted something with a little bit more room. And we bought um, bunk bed cots that Mm -hmm. convert into a couch. Uh, We got the foam floor. We got a battery pack, um, some LED lights, a fan. So we've kind of got it all set up now. And this last week, it was the first time we brought the dog with, and he oh thoroughly enjoyed fishing. Really? So that was a lot of fun. Yes, yes, he loved it. But um, it's just a way to get out there, and we like being a little bit more mobile. Um, so with having that, we have been able to, you know, it is a lot to set up, but we can still move around pretty easily. And we have the four wheeler or the snowmobile to get us out there so we can get out a little bit further. You know, we don't have to wait for the the ice conditions to allow a big ice castle or a big shack to go out there. Mm -hmm. We can go out there with our portable setup and pretty much fish wherever we want. And it's been great. We, I mean, this last weekend, it got down to, um, to zero and we were totally fine in our shack. We got our slippers. We brought my iPad with, we watched Netflix and movies and it's great. Cool. I think what's super cool about that is that is, um, you know, the mobility that's set up and then the fact that, you know, you don't need um, a super expensive setup to do that. Right. No. And, and it's not 
not that it's cheap. It's like there is expense to it, but it, it's kind of a, you know, if you balance it against like a resort for the weekend or buying an ice Correct. castle or whatever, um, if you put in a little bit of extra work, you can definitely have some really good opportunities to, to go where you want and do what you want. Correct. And I mean, it's pretty much paid for itself. You know, every year we would go rent, you know, a shack, you know, a shack overnight or something up at a resort mm-hmm. or, you know, get hotel rooms and go. And when we start looking at not having to pay for that and just sleeping out on the ice and the benefit to it is, you know, the last couple of times, the lakes that we've been on, um, the bite is overnight. And, you know, so you hear if that, you're Jeff? in a hotel. Mm-hmm. Night bite. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I Kathy. I, I, I just okay. highlight I that point. Argue that Malax, night bite. Fish Malax has a night bite. Fish all night. Yes. yes. On Malax, there's a night bite. Lake of the Woods, a different story. But uh, we heard Malax. that there will we'll continue this argument later. <laughs> Correct. I mean, we've been up to, to Red, Upper Red, and there's not that was not a night bite. So you got your sleep. Um, you know, last weekend, or the last two weekends, I've been out on Malax and you know, the one weekend on the Lax, every, you know, seven minutes, the rattle reels were going off. I mean, it wow. was, it was exciting. So um, that is definitely a night bite. You better take your nap during the day because you're not going to get a ton of sleep at night. When they're on, they're on. And it, it comes through heavy at night. That's cool. I kind of interrupted you. You were talking a little bit about the economy of what your setup was. Yeah, I mean, we basically paid for it in itself, not having to do the resorts and all of that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's it's been a lot of fun. Um, that is one thing that, you know, me and my husband have. And, you know, we're going on 18 years and, and fishing together is something that we love to do, whether it's summer fishing or winter fishing. And just knowing that I have that in common with my husband, it's something we can always do together. And I know when I'm old and at that point, I probably won't want to be as mobile and have as much work as I do now. So at that point, I'll go out and buy that fish house and uh, sure. sit in my rocking chair with my dog and sit in a fish house and have my husband by my side, catch him while he's on a Mille Lacs. At least showing him how to do it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. He may not be catching them, but I'll show him how to do it. Some, at least you will be. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's so, cool. Yeah. So Kathy, we we you we were talking um, more more recent, but uh, maybe talk a little bit about your, your when you first started ice fishing or your first ice fishing experience. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I started uh, you know just fishing with my dad when I was a little girl, but I really got into ice fishing um, in high school. A good friend of mine, her boyfriend was a avid ice fisherman. Her dad was an ice fisherman, and um, you know every weekend we would go up to her cabin and, you know, go out ice fishing with her dad and her boyfriend. And that is when I caught my, my personal best while I um, was out with them, but, you know, just starting off at, at, you know, in high school and getting into it. And I didn't know a lot about it. And, you know, everything that I kind of learned was kind of through them. My dad didn't really do any ice fishing. Um, He was more strictly just summer fishing. So, doing that and just, you know, learning as I go. And then, you know, me and Sean started dating and, you know, he really wasn't that into ice fishing either. And we just kind of did our research and watched stuff. And it was something where we loved summer fishing so much that we were like, we got to figure this out and we live in the perfect state. So let's figure it out. And I just watch a lot of videos online and YouTube and I joined some fishing forums on Facebook and, you know, there's a lot of information out there. You just got to do the time and research to, to learn how to do it. So this might be a hard question. So Uh-oh. how do you, how do we, Jeff's like, oh, gee, oh, gee, Jason's This is on script. the list. This is on the Jason's script, Jason. Off script. No, this is a, this is a valid question. Okay. So how does one, how, how would a, a fellow go about talking or getting his wife to start enjoying ice fishing like you do i mean how if someone were inclined and and some of us are not inclined to even attempt such a thing but if (laughs) if one wants to be inclined to do are you looking at me jason no no (laughs) um how how would you do it what advice would you give how do we how do we do it i think the biggest thing is is you gotta get them on fish right away to to pique their interest um where i failed you need to make sure that they're gonna stay warm and now with the gear and you know what women want to look cute while they're out there too. 
you know, they have all this gear. I mean, my ice suit is a men's ice suit. When I started ice fishing and I bought my, my clam outfit, they didn't have these cute women ones with the pink and gray colors and all these wonderful colors. So, you know, I just have the original, but you know, it's, I think making it fun, getting them on fish, you know, if it's somebody who doesn't love to fish, they're not going to want to go. It's not exciting for them to sit out there and stare at this electronic screen and, and jig and not catch anything. You, you got to find, get them on some sort of fish. And I'm telling you, once they pull in a big walleye and they feel the fight of the rod, I don't know, for me, I was hooked, but keep them warm, have other things to do while you're out there. If you're not catching fish and, you know, just try to make it fun. Like I really look at it as it's just time I get to have with my husband and the fact that he wants to go fishing with me and spend that time with me instead of just always going with his buddies. That's pretty cool. And, you know, this last weekend I went out with my son's 17 years old. He's really gotten into ice fishing the last couple of years. And, you know, my husband was out of town and my son said, mom, let, let's, let's go up to Mille Lacs. Let's go sleep out on the, on the Lax for the weekend. Let's spend the weekend out there. And his buddy who, you know, 17 as well was like, can I go with, and it's his best friend. And I thought, you know, how cool is this? That two 17 year old kids want to go hang out with me, their mom on a Saturday, you know, over the, over the weekend and go ice fishing and camp on the ice. But we had a blast. We caught lots, you know, we had a really decent weekend, caught a 26 inch walleye, you know, 25, a 22. I mean, we caught, we caught fish, we caught small perch, but we just had a blast and we made pizza rolls out on the ice and I made them bacon and eggs and hash browns for breakfast. And we just had a great time. And I think that to me, the fact that my son wants to hang out with me on a weekend is priceless. That's why I do it. I do it because mm -hmm. it connects me to my family a little bit more, to the guys in my family, because I know it's their love too. And I think it's great just being able to spend that time with them. I guess what I, I just think that's a wonderful, wonderful story. And I really thank you for sharing that with us, Kathy. It's uh, anytime we get to spend with our kids and, and spouses doing the things we love is sure just the coolest thing ever. So yeah, that's pretty thanks. Cool. Yep. So one thing we always ask um, our guests when we have them on, you know, we, we, we always talk about an ice fishing legend or story that uh, is in your past. And, um, you know, we told a bunch of these and, you know, Ole was probably in a bunch of these in the past, but um, eventually we kind of ran out, right, Jay? I mean, we, we just kind of told most of anything anybody wanted to hear, right? So, yeah, all uh, the ones that were available for public consumption have been shared. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so we always love it when uh, we have guests on and they can share their legend or story because pretty much everybody that's been ice fishing has one. So, Kathy, do you want to? Do you have a legend you could share with us about ice fishing? I do. Probably my favorite one. Um, my husband already shared with you. Ole is my husband, by the way, and um, he already shared probably my favorite one of when him and I went to Canada and I thought he was trying to kill me on this trip, but I think um, he might have been. Yeah, I think he was, <laughs> honestly, you know, I, I really, I questioned it a few times while I was sitting out on that ice. I'll tell you that. Um, but, and that was the slush story. I, I don't want to interrupt you, but just correct. for people that don't remember, that was, uh, they got buried in slush repeatedly. Correct. Yes. Yeah. And so he left me on the ice to, you know, pave a way to get off the ice. And there I was packing snow around my legs to stay warm, thinking he was leaving me out there to die. Um, but I'll go to a different story, which also has Oli in it. And um, this story was um, basically when me and Oli started dating. My really good friend from high school um, had a cabin and, you know, they had permanent fish houses out on the lake. And Sean was really good friends with my good friend's brother. So he would go up to the same cabin that I would go up to. And I never really, I mean, I knew of him, you know, talked to him a little bit, but never had any interest in him. I mean, he was, no, we had no interest in each other at this point. So <laughs> oh boy. Um, yeah, so we go up there and he went up to do some snowmobiling with his buddy and, and some friends. And I went up there to ice fish. And so we were in one shack and, you know, they had been drinking and decided they were going to come fishing with us. And so 
somehow Sean ended up in the shack with myself, my, my really good friend, Amy and, and her boyfriend. And at some point, you know, Sean was feeling very well. He was, he was doing good. And, you know, we were having a lot of fun fishing and somehow myself or Amy got our lines caught up with Sean's. And ended up pulling up Sean's Sean's hook. Well, Sean had no idea that we had his hook. You know, I kind of looked at, at Steve and he's like, okay, this is the perfect opportunity to play a joke on Sean. He's drunk, has no idea we're doing this. So he starts pulling on Sean's line and we start playing it off. We're like, Sean, you got, you got a bite. And so he starts going to fight it. And we're on the other side of the shack, just pulling the line and pulling the line. And then we'd let some go and and, you know, Steve is, is talking this all up. Oh, my God, it must be a really big one. And Sean's just like, oh, and he's, you know, going back and forth, fighting this fish. And we're pulling the drag and trying not to laugh on the other side of the shack. And, you know, a couple of minutes go by. And we're like, OK, how long is he going to think this is real? So we <laughs> long time, a long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so he we're like, OK, we, how do we finish this? And we had a cooler of bush light can uh, beers next to us. And so. You know, Steve looks at me and Amy and I kind of look at him and he's like, oh, yeah. So we grab the bush light and kind of, you know, pop the top up and hook it onto the hook. And so we're still kind of fighting it from the other side and he's still reeling. And then we, you know, let him play it off a little bit. We decided we would drop the bush light down the hole. And so then, you know, we're like, oh, you're finally tiring this fish out. You know, keep reeling, keep reeling. You're gaining on it. And. Needless to say, he pulled up the can of bush light beer and we all bust out laughing. And at that moment, I thought, you know what? This guy's pretty cool. He kind of played along with this whole, if he knew it, he played along with it, but it was, it was a really fun time. And at that point I was like, you know what? I kind of, I kind of like this guy. And, you know, we've been together now, married for 18 years and that's that. So. You might say he hooked. He you hooked at the, that moment too. Yes, he did. He hooked my peeper that night. So, wow. That's yeah. awesome. That is a that's legend. A, that's a great story. He's I don't think he's ever told us that story. Yeah, he probably didn't want to let on that he was that drunk and actually caught a bush can of beer. Yeah. So. Yeah. That could be it. But so no, you that, guys could you guys could play that same joke on him some point at on your boys' weekends. I feel like yeah. maybe we have. But but I'm, I'm not going to marry him, though. It might I'm have not going to marry him. I don't know. You're not going to marry him? Or date him. No, no, no date nope. him. Oh, this just got weird. <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah, uh, thank you so much for sharing that. That's a great, great legend with a, a very happy outcome in the end. I mean, yes. he, he got the girl and the beer. What else? Yes. What else, what else no do fish, you though. No fish, No though. fish, but, but you know. Yeah. Well, we really want to thank you again for coming on the show, Kathy. You're you're welcome anytime. Just let us know, um, and feel free anytime we have Oli on and to send in corrections to what he says. <laughs> I will do that if if <laughs> things are inaccurate. Uh, just I will to, do that. To fact check him is fine with us anytime. Definitely, and don't let him say that he outfishes me ever because we all know that's not true. Yeah, I, we all know that's not true. We know, but you know, you, you know. Sometimes we gotta make them feel good, right? You, we do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks again. Thanks, thanks, guys. We want to really thank Kathy again for coming on the show with us. It was really great to hear from her and hear her side of of some of their adventures and and uh, how she gets it done out there ice fishing. It's pretty cool. Well, we want to thank everybody for listening and have a great week. Tight lines. Cheers. Five. You've been listening to the Hard Water Fishing Show with Jeff and Jason. Say goodbye. One of the most unique podcasts on the planet where we talk about tactics, gear, and ice fishing legends. We'll be back soon. Bye-bye. Till then, signing off. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.